Change Lives for Good with your host, Greg Kefferly. Immigration, the lifeblood of a thriving economy or a threat to our jobs and our community? Santa Clara County is the most diverse county in the nation because people with or without legal papers come here in search of the American dream. But for some people, it's the only option they have to find safety and security. Hello, I'm Greg Kepferly, CEO of Catholic Charities and host of Change Lives for Good. And today we're going to be talking with Robert Yabez and Juan Hill Garcia of Catholic Charities Immigrant Legal Services and Claudio Bravo, a dreamer, one of the many young people who have benefited from the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. But first I want to share with you a story from one of our clients, Blanca. Blanca's story is not uncommon, however it is one that is seldom heard about in the debate on immigration reform. Why did you decide to come to the United States? I want to let you know that not even in my princess dreams I thought that I would have this kind of life. I never thought that I would be able to raise the beautiful family that I have, even though that is, I'm divorced, you know, and I have my two sons, you know. And I'm so grateful for, you know, all what I've been doing, you know. And thanks to this country, because of course if I'm, if I were in Mexico, you know, I know I wouldn't be who I am, or my kids, you know. So, I tell my kids, we don't have to ask for much, just a job, you know? Just a right to be safe. Right to have something to eat without being victim of abuse, you know? And, and I'm just so, like, you know, as soon as I came to this country, when uh, this, uh, nun, a Catholic nun, she opened the door for me and she said, oh, because I have Tony, he was three months old when I came here and Arturo was five years old. She will sew her clothes to make the clothes fit me so I can go out and look for a job. You know, not even my own family in Mexico did that for me. Or another person who didn't know me, you know, he asked me, are you hungry? And I said, no. So I, of course he can see that I was hungry and my kids were hungry and then they feed me, you know, without no who I am, you know, with no question asked about, you need to pay me back or I need your body so I can feed you or anything, you know. So <laughs> having my, my legal studies is just like, just one little piece of my dream, you know? But because just by being here safe and seeing my kids safe, you know, and growing like the way they grow, you know, I can say thanks God, you know, million times. But now this, having my immigration studies, is just like, like the extra thing, you know, like I deserve more than, I have more than what I deserve, you know, in this life, you know? So, thank you, thank you, and I'm sorry, you know, I. I know that my life is not the only life in this world that has been through so much. I know that a lot of people have been through so much and I wish them to come and get help and they get their, what they need, you know, hopefully they can get okay. Blanca's story is just one of millions of stories out there and it's important to remember people like Blanca when we have this conversation because for some, immigration is a matter of survival not simply a matter of choice. So welcome, Robert, Juan Hill, Claudia. Good to see you, thanks for coming. Immigration reform is, is a tough topic for, for many people, but Catholic Charities has been doing this for, for many, many years. And so Robert, as the Director of Immigrant Legal Services for Catholic Charities, how long has Catholic Charities been providing immigrant legal services and, and how many people have you helped? Yeah, we've been doing these services to immigrants in our community for the past 37 years. 
we've been accredited by the Federal Board of Immigration Appeals in Washington, D.C. in 1976, and we serve almost 3,000 clients a year. For, for the past 37 years that we've been helping immigrants, we've helped over 100,000 immigrants in Santa Clara County. Wow, 100,000 immigrants, that's, that's mm -hmm. terrific, that's wonderful. So, and, and, and Santa Clara County is one of the most diverse counties in, in the country, which is just absolutely fabulous that we have this, this wealth of diversity here. So, what are the services that Catholic Charities uh, provides? How do, you, how do you help immigrants uh, become part of the American society? So, we first uh, get them to, co to come to us through a consultation process, and that's how we found out about their immigration situation. So if we identify immigration benefits based on our legal assessment, then we help them start their uh, application process. So what types of applications do you see? I mean, are, are you working primarily with people that are undocumented, people that are documented that want to become citizens, or, or what, what are the issues that you see? Juan Hill? Yes, well, we, uh, well, most of the work that we do in our office is family-based petitions, so we work a lot with mixed status families. U.S. citizens who want to petition for their spouses, their children, or uh, U.S. citizens who want to petition for their parents. But we also see a lot of cases, especially of late, uh, uh, of people who have been victims of crimes and who assisted in the prosecution. Uh, there's a special remedy uh, for that kind of uh, uh, situation. It's called the U-Visa. Uh, we help uh, also with citizenship uh, under the Violence Against Women Act. We also uh, help people who are victims of abuse and if their spouse, parent, or child is uh, a citizen who, and is abusing them, they may be able to do a self-petition. Uh, we have a lot of clients who have uh, applied for temporary protected status, and of course, uh, uh, we've also helped uh, a lot, uh, hundreds of uh, youth uh, apply for deferred action for child arrivals. Uh, and we pretty much do everything in our office except for uh, most employment based, except for religious workers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the only employment based uh, petition that we do. But in, in um, aligned with our mission to serve th uh, the ones who are in need, uh, we decide to focus our efforts in other uh, remedies uh, aside from uh, employment based. So as, as you look at the, the needs of the people that come to you, you mentioned mixed status families. Yes. Now for the, the average viewer, what, what does it mean when you're a mixed status person or a mixed status family? Okay, well I can give you an example, I guess to make it more concrete. So uh, I, I'm thinking of a particular client without saying names who has been on a waiting list since 1994 to immigrate through his uh, father. The father became a permanent resident uh, during the legalization program of the 1980s. Um, he happens to be very unfortunate that he's the oldest in his family and he was over 21 with, uh, when everybody else immigrated his brothers, his sisters, so now he's been on the waiting list. So his father is now a U.S. citizen, but because he's over 21, he's still on the waiting list. His uh, mother's a permanent resident, all his siblings are residents or citizens. He has U.S. citizen children, and he's the only undocumented in his family. So that's one example of, uh, of mixed status families, both uh, maybe in some cases there are visa overstays, people who came with a visa, they just overstayed in the same family, but that's just one example. So it sounds like, uh, number one, immigration law right now is really complex. Yes. And it also sounds like it, it takes people a long time, people that want to do the right thing, yes. a really long time to apply. So, so you have people coming to you, Robert, that uh, Juan Hill was saying this one, one person was, has applied 20 years ago. Is, mm -hmm. is, that, is that usual? Do you see that uh, often? Are you seeing with immigration law that long a wait for someone to, uh, to uh, become a legal, legal resident? Yeah, it's not very unusual because there, the, there is some visa limitations uh, on how immig uh, immigrants get, get their legal status. Uh, like Mexico and the Philippines, it would take more than 20 years for a relative to immigrate through a petition filed by a U.S. citizen family member. So. It really take a lot of uh, years for people to immigrate. There is this other visa category under the immediate relative. It's much faster, but um, 
more people are immigrating under the other family-based petitions. So, so what do you recommend people do when they're trying to get right with the law? Because it sounds like what you have are families where you have fam some family members are U.S. citizens, mm -hmm. some family members are legal residents, some family members may not have papers, they want to keep the family together, uh, but uh, the law right now is very complex. What, what do you recommend that they do? Yeah, as you said earlier, yeah, uh, people would like to make it right with the law. So that's what they have been waiting for for many years. And the opportunity has been very elusive. Uh, debate is going on in Congress, Congress to uh, put together an immigration reform that would give legal opportunity for people who are here for many years without legal status. So there is an estimated number of 11 million undocumented immigrants in the United States who, who can get right with the law. Right, so it seems like the, the, the fundamental values mm -hmm. that you're working with are that people want to do the right thing. They want to get right with the law. They want to keep their families together mm -hmm. so it's strong family values. That people aren't coming over here to to abuse the system, it's because of oftentimes circumstances out of their control. And, and we'll be talking with Claudia a little bit later to talk about her own story mm -hmm. uh, coming over here as, as a childhood arrival. Uh, so, so Robert, what do you recommend in terms of this policy related to comprehensive immigration reform? If, if, if you were uh, uh, the Speaker of the House or, or the uh, President of the United States, what, what would you recommend that we do for comprehensive immigration reform? Yeah, if my, my recommendation would be in, uh, that people go through an earned legalization process. Mm -hmm. uh, so earned legalization, what, what would that mean? So earned legalization would mean that go, they go through legal, the, the, the legal means to uh, stay in the United States. So they have, they go through uh, legal background check. Mm -hmm. They go through uh, uh, learn English. Uh, so th they do basically what the law wants them to go through in order to get passed to become legal residents and eventually become uh, citizens of the United States, wherein they can contribute to make this country stronger and better. Right, so, so really what you're saying is with the 11 million people that are currently living in the shadows, mm -hmm. that you want to help them come out of the shadows through earned legalization and have a clear path to citizenship that they have the opportunity, it's not a guarantee, but it would be an opportunity for them to become fully participating members of American society and, and not to have second class citizens. Yes. That's and that seems like that would be also better for the economy because isn't there uh, uh, so a study that you've done? You had people do some research, at least on legal permanent residents. Uh, what percentage of income do they increase their income by? Yes, uh, there, there, there was a study made that when a person uh, becomes a legal permanent resident, they increase their economic value by 16%. 16%, so that's like a 16% raise which then translate into people buying more goods and products, mm -hmm. uh, improving the economy, hiring more people, paying more taxes, because they're already paying taxes, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden we have this economic engine that uh, legal legalization will provide. And then with citizenship, that seems like that could be potentially an economic boom uh, for, th for the United States. So that's, that's really wonderful. Um, we're going to have a break shortly, and when we come back from the break, we'll be talking with uh, Claudia uh, Bravo, who has an, just an amazing story uh, to tell us about her own transition and uh, the, the wonderful gift of deferred action for childhood arrivals. This is Greg Kepferly with Change Lives for Good. There are an estimated 11.2 million undocumented immigrants living in the United States. Catholic Charities of Santa Clara County has provided 
Immigration and Legal Services since 1976 to help assist and aid the increasing number of immigrants moving to Santa Clara County. The program is fully accredited by the Federal Board of Immigration Appeals in Washington, D.C. The Immigration and Legal Services program serves low-income immigrants of all nationalities and backgrounds. The program helps eligible immigrants navigate the process of becoming a United States citizen, giving them the opportunity to establish firm roots in this country so they can thrive. Volunteer opportunities are available for attorneys, law students, and persons with language translation skills. Please contact volunteer at catholiccharitiessc.org. That's volunteer at catholiccharitiessc.org. Catholic Charities works to end poverty by helping families and individuals get the tools they need to become more self-reliant. It offers a hand up rather than a hand out through a wide range of services and serves more than 41,000 people each year of all cultures and beliefs. Welcome back to Change Lives for Good. I'm your host, Greg Kepferly, CEO of Catholic Charities. And with me are Juan Hill Garcia, and, and Robert Yabez from Catholic Charities Immigrant Legal Services, and Claudia Blanco, who is a dreamer and actually a volunteer with Catholic Charities uh, Immigrant Legal Services as well. Welcome, Claudia. Thank you for having me. So um, you have uh, just an amazing story that is shared by so many people who uh, have been in your situation, who were brought here uh, not of your own will, not of your own choice, but you found yourself in these circumstances. So, so um, tell us, how did you come to uh, San Jose? Well, um, I came with my family from Mexico, and I was two, my brother was four at that time, and we grew up in San Francisco. That was the first place that we ended when we got here. Um, then we moved around different places. We had about four to five um, different homes because of my dad's work. He had to move around a lot. And then we ended up here in San Jose. And I started going to high school. I went to De Anza College, and um, I met this great mentor of mine, and she's the one who always pushed me to, you know, succeed and be more, and um, here I am. <laughs> so, so you're here, but um, before the DREAM Act, before DACA, which is the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, which was the administrative remedy that President Obama made because he couldn't get the DREAM Act passed by Congress. He just made this uh, executive order, which then allows uh, childhood arrivals who, who are without papers to be able to stay here uh, at least during his administration, yeah, right? Yeah, a couple of years, yeah. and it helps. So, <laughs> so before that happened, what was your situation? What, was your, what were your feelings? What were you thinking when you, as, as, as you, survived uh, going to school and and you know everything starts hitting you when you start high school because you need your social security for this for your license for if you want to apply a job and during that time um, before I applied for this it, it was constant fear because you didn't know what was going to happen to you um, at some points I didn't see what was going to happen in the future if there was going to be a remedy or if you know, if I was ever going to accomplish my dream. Right, so, so you're living in a situation of fear. You're trying to do the right thing, but, but, but you're you going can't. to school, but you can't, <laughs> right? So then when you heard about DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, what did you first think and feel? My first thought was, it's a trap. It's a trap. You're going to get deported. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So why, why did you think that? I think it was just everything in the news and what we saw that a lot of families were splitting up and families were getting um, separated and people were getting deported and at that time I just thought it's a trap. I'm not going to do it. 
I want to wait it out. And the ones who actually got me to do it were, were a couple of my counselors and my parents. They pushed me. So, <laughs> so what, what did they do to push you? How did, how did they persuade you? Why did you say, finally say yes? Because, you know, one of the things that they said is, if you're going to live in fear and you're not going to push yourself and do something, you know, you're never going to accomplish anything. And finally one day I was driving, listening to music, <laughs> radio, and I was like, you know what, let's just do it. What do we have to lose? If you end up getting deported, then you'll see your family over there. So what do you have to lose? Just do it. And what do you have to gain? Exactly. <laughs> so what's, so since, since you applied and, and received the status of deferred action, uh, what has changed for you? Well, now I'm working right now, and um, I have a lot more time, I would say, to um, help my, my siblings, my younger siblings out, uh, my parents out, you know, just help them with bills, because there was a struggle before this, and there still is, but now it's a little bit less. So, so it's still a struggle, but, but you're working. Exactly. You have a job. You're able to give back to society. So how does that make you feel? amazing <laughs> you know it's not as yes we have a two-year time limit and within those two years there's a lot of things that I want to accomplish but it's not constant fear that you're gonna be deported at some point you know it's like you have at least for that amount of time you have peacefulness you have, say. You have <laughs> a sense of peace so so what would you recommend for your for uh, your friends or Anybody, any, any youth uh, in your situation, I guess it's what, from age 15 to age 32, mm -hmm. 32 and a half now are eligible. What would you recommend that they do? Apply. Just apply. You know, if you're afraid of something, just go for it. You, you are going to you might think that you're going to lose something, but you also have something else to gain. And I think actually our community has an amazing amount to gain <laughs> from, from you and 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 uh, your friends and colleagues who have this great spirit, you're going to school, you're working, you're giving back to our society, and I really hope that, that we can see that, that this can become permanent. So Robert, is, is there any chance that, uh, you know, that DACA, the Deferred Action, or a DREAM Act, uh, you know, what, what are the, your hopes for uh, the law. I know you want the comprehensive immigration reform, but is it is it possible that we might get uh, maybe a piece of it that could pass? Yeah, I think anything is possible in any type of legislation. So the, the Senate already passed their own version of comprehensive immigration reform, and there is bipartisan agreement in that decision. The House of Representatives are still uh, deadlocked with what to do, whether it will be immigration reform or not. But the thing is, uh, even prior to the decision of the Senate, there was already bipartisan support for the DREAM Act. So anything, anything can happen in legislation, but uh, we just need to be hopeful and keep on uh, pushing that uh, our legislators uh, do something about uh, the situation because uh, people are just doing their best to uh, uh, work here and contribute to the economy and I think that should be that should be uh, taken very seriously right and and as as uh, US citizens and as people of faith what what do we ask uh, what would you encourage uh, our neighbors and our community to do well, uh, I would encourage people to welcome the stranger as the gospel uh, calls us to do and to keep uh, an open mind and heart to the struggles of immigrants and, uh, and to uh, urge uh, Congress people to pass uh, a, a, a comprehension of immigration reform uh, and, and e uh, even if it is not uh, a complete uh, general uh, legalization program but uh, for the uh, students, the DREAM Act, mm -hmm. um, but I would definitely urge people to um, uh, contact the representatives, uh, their senators, and ask them to pass uh, immigration reform and fix our current immigration system uh, that is keeping families apart and breaking people's dreams instead of being consistent with our history of, of welcoming uh, the, the um, 
the immigrants who are eager to contribute to uh, our society. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like we have, th we're at this moment where we have people that are eager for this immigration law to change. We have this incredibly complex, outdated law where people who are trying to get right with the law, it takes them 20 years uh, uh, to do the right thing, uh, just to see their family members. Uh, and, and we have this whole demand in our society now for skilled workers, for high-tech workers. Um, we have this uh, just untapped reservoir of talented people like Claudia who are eager to learn and to work and contribute. Uh, it just seems like we're at this moment that we, if we just seize this moment, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you're on the left or the right, if you're Republican or Democrat, that together uh, we can make sure that people get right with the law, that people can uh, keep their families together and support family values, and that we can be a stronger and more thriving community. And it's really amazing to see, uh, you know, Catholic Charities has been at this work for 37 years, and you're still going to be doing, <laughs> doing this work, I'm sure, a lot longer with people waiting another 20 years. But um, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for, for the amazing work that all three of you do uh, <laughs> to, to welcome uh, immigrants, to welcome newcomers into our, our community, whether they're people that are uh, undocumented, people that are permanent residents wanting to become citizens, uh, people that are, are struggling because of uh, domestic violence or because of crime trying to, to get protection uh, from the law, um, or the dreamers who have this great dream to be part of the American dream. So I just want to say uh, it has just been a real pleasure and honor uh, to be part of this conversation. And want to encourage all of our viewers to contact your Congress, re congressional representatives to uh, help change lives for good by supporting comprehensive immigration reform. This is Greg Kepferly, CEO of Catholic Charities of Santa Clara County. You have been watching Change Lives for Good. And remember to speak up, reach out, and change lives for good.